Did you think we weren't going to overreact to the G-Day game? <laughs> let me let me stop you right there because we've got some thoughts coming up now on the Locked on Bulldogs podcast. You are Locked on Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Y'all, we are back. He is Daniel. I am Clint. Thanks for making us your first listen of the day. This is Locked On Bulldogs, part of Locked On Podcast Network. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. In today's episode, like I said, uh, it's hard to get people high stakes wager of hiring and firing and getting people on your team and off your team and all that stuff. But great news, LinkedIn is there. LinkedIn Jobs is the right people for your team, faster and free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Uh, we did have G Day. We had eyes on football. And Daniel, Ooh. can I just, in a word, mm-hmm. in, in, in just a word, stupendous. Mm-hmm. It was stupendous. It was fantastic. It was awesome. It was everything that you <clears throat> needed to see happen at G Day. And we're going to talk all about it. We're going to take probably more than likely just just imagine you hadn't seen a friend in a very long time, right? Friend comes into town. Yep. You, you've been apart. You've been distant. It's been radio silence. Maybe they've been working a, abroad and they come on back and you just say, hey, why don't we just why don't we just go for a little walk and just mm-hmm. let's converse openly and, and readily about our adventures. That's what we're going to do with this G Day news because there was a lot from what our eyeball saw on Saturday, Daniel. Yeah, so multiple episodes will probably be here talking about G-Day, but that's fine. We're all happy about that. Um, There's plenty to discuss. We're not going to try to rush through it. So don't if we don't get to the things you want to talk about, make sure to let us know in the comments what it is that you what it is you saw, what it is that your eyes most went to. Obviously, today is Monday as we're recording this. Andrew Paul announces he's transferring. There's going to be plenty of news. We're going to try to get to some of that. Maybe we won't get to some of that. We'll come back and catch up with all of it. But let's let's talk about G-Day, Clint. And I want to start here big picture. You said stupendous. The word I was going to use to describe the game was magical. I'm going to give you what make what may be deemed a hot take. And I would love your reaction to it. Daniel, okay? I, it, someone in the comments is going to take this, what you're about to say, as a, a rabidly hot take. So, yes. Sure. It's it's an overreaction show. We call it that for a reason. Yeah. Um, I think that that G-Day game Mm. was more enjoyable to watch than many regular season Georgia football games that I have watched this team play. I'm talking about that was some of the most enjoyable football watching experience that I've had in quite some time, Clint. Well, let's just, again, we're going to get to all of them, but let's Let's go through the the laundry list of things you want to see happen in a good football game. Okay. okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. How, how about how about key defensive stops and momentum swinging plays? Did did we see that? No, we saw that. Yeah. Okay. How about brute force best on best mm-hmm. absolute bone jarring hitting? Did we see that? No, we saw that. Okay, yeah, we, we saw, saw that. that. Yeah. Uh, what about exceptional pinpoint accuracy at the quarterback position, taking risks downfield on big plays through the air. Did we see that? Well, we saw that. Yeah. How about the fact that with, with less than a minute to go in the fourth quarter, um, we are in a competitive ball game. How about the fact that we had starters playing the entire time? Like we're talking about the entire game. It's good on good. It's one V one. It, I'm telling you, and, and, you know, other fan bases may not appreciate the take, but I'm not here for other fan bases, so I'm not concerned about that. Um, Georgia just played the best offense and the best defense that it's going to play all yes, year, all year. And it was a 20 to 20 ball game going it like going down the stretch how could you have asked for a better football game? It, it was good yeah. on all levels. There, are there concerns coming out of the game? Maybe. Are there things that shined from this team? Definitely. All that to talk about. But I just really appreciate, Clint, mm. that we have a football coach for our program who likes coaching football. Do you see what he what he does? See, and this is this is what's wild. Other universities had gimmicky spring games. We're out here playing tiddlywinks. Had, and calling had, it a spring game. 
had designed plays in which spring game you can't tackle the quarterback. Most schools sure, have this rule. Yeah. We have some universities that are deliberately running off tackle quarterback runs mm-hmm. to try to impress people mm-hmm. when you can't touch said individual. Like sure. This is a joke. You're you're we a got, joke for we got seven on sevens going on out here. We got slam dunk contests going on. We're calling sure. it the spring. We may it's as spring this game. is basically midnight madness for is college there, basketball. And is there now a hot we're dog calling eating contest this. somewhere. Did yeah. that did that take place as well? It's a circus. It is true, but Georgia has Kirby Smart. And the thing that I saw in this game, and, and again, Andrew Paul on the portal, but this I think is gonna have to change ongoing because if you don't think that was resume tape for some dudes. Who Kirby has said, look, I, I'm going to keep contacting you. I'm going to keep, con- hey, USC, I'm not done with the kid with Terry that you think you just landed and, and soaked up. Again, Be I ain't done with you. Be um, hey, Andrew Paul, you're in the portal. I get it. Go check out. We've seen this before. Mims came back. You can come back. Kirby's going to keep it there. The thing that impressed me about G-Day is I think this is going to become a new standard mm-hmm. for people who actually want to compete. And that is getting actual game tape, good on good. You're seeing people develop. Ones were in the entirety of the game. It wasn't a, hey, let's go out and let's let's get you five reps and then let's take you out. No, 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 no. Kirby, when he says, I like competition, and if you come to Georgia, I'm going to develop you. Um, it's true. And guys, the, the top tier guys, not the middle tier, the top tier guys love that attitude and love that they camaraderie do. and love that culture. And you should too, Georgia fan. It was exceptional all the way across. Um, and, and Daniel, you, you were exactly right. Uh, my biggest, besides stupendous and, and magical and all that, if, if you guys don't think I'm about to just get up on a stack of soapboxes and tell you how right we are on a number of things. Here comes the second segment, y'all. Clint's. Clint's about to go off. In the second I'm about segment. to go off. And all of you who thought I was crazy. No, Now's the time thinks- to either turn off the show or just mentally prepare yourself because my man's about to go off in segment two, which will happen right after these. And these are, in fact, LinkedIn. <clears throat> Whether you're hiring for your small business, you want to call, you want qualified professionals that are right for the role that's why you have to check out linkedin jobs linkedin jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free daniel i know what it's like to be on a good team and a bad team we have a great team in georgia Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a great team here on this podcast executive producer m dubs uh we didn't get from linkedin our bad with that we should have gone elsewhere but when we have to hire another one we will linkedin is just a job board it helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else even those who aren't actively searching for new jobs over 70 percent of linkedin users don't visit other leading job sites. So you're not looking, if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Right now, you can post your job for free. LinkedIn.com slash locked on calls. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on calls. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Clint, I set you up at the end of the first segment. I'm going to ask you to give us one name. If there was one name that you walked away from this yeah. scrimmage that just needed to come out of your mouth, yeah. what's the what's the one name that you want to bring to the people? I have a litany of, of names, people. So don't think this is my one and only. I have a whole yeah. litany of players that just showed out. Mm-hmm. But I caught abject flack for saying Colby Young is going to be close to double-digit touchdowns this year for Georgia. Mm -hmm. People saying, well, look at everybody else. He's not even one. He's a developmental guy. Come on, please. Never done anything at Miami. What kind of a garbage institution is he coming from? No culture down there. He doesn't know how any. He probably doesn't know any work ethic. He probably doesn't know how to block. He's never going to see the field. He's never Mm -hmm. done anything. He's never really produced. Mm -hmm. He's buried on the depth chart. Buried on the depth chart. You have so many other talented receivers. We never rotate through. We never have guys that are getting scheme and fit. And all of a sudden, many guys, yeah. all of a sudden Saturday comes and all I see all these articles popping out from people saying Colby Young is going to be a red zone threat for Georgia this year. And I said, 
You huh. tell me the insiders and the gurus are in on this now, Clint? Well, they they are now. Now they, they're in they, on it. They're yeah, in yeah. now. After no, here they are. Y'all, Colby Young is going to be a problem all year. We get down. I, I, this is my exact words. We get down anywhere near the 25, and there is not a quick call. If the defense is still not gathered, and Kirby and Bobo sense that there's an opportunity, there's going to be a little check with me, Carson Beck and Colby, and he's going to do a little fade. He ain't going to have to check with no one. We going. We know. just. Know. We going to know where we going. We going to know. And and that back of the corner of the end zone with man coverage, that safety comes down two, two yards from where he normally positioned. Carson Beck's going to be like, go get some young buck. Going to toss it up. Colby Young is a problem, will be a problem, is going to make this offense electric. We haven't had this type of body size, speed, possession, red zone threat in a hot minute. Many of you are going to say, well, we had Brock Bowers in the red zone. Yes, we did. A absolutely. Run after catch is where Brock does exceptionally well. His athleticism really takes over then. But Wait, just does he high. have athleticism? Because I was told from some NFL draft gurus that he tested fairly low in in quote unquote uh -huh. athleticism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we are the numbers that we ran show him to be non-athletic. Let me tell you who's non-athletic. People run in numbers there to decide who's yeah. athletic. That's a non-athletic person. For I you. know because your job is what your athletic skill is. Okay. We're behind the microphones, people for we, a reason. We know. Um, no, Colby Young is that dude, Daniel. He, he was yeah. everything I yeah. hoped he would be in the offense. Literally everything I hoped he would be. couple things on Colby Young. Thing number one, and you can't read too much into this going into a G-Day game, but I wrote down two names, one on the offensive side of the ball, one on the defensive side of the ball, that I said to myself, oh, they're running with the ones yeah. in this game. So that's a... Again, you can't run too much, read too much into this. You can't because you, you know there's you got guys that are injured, and then you've got yeah. you know it's not this. You could have guys that are buried on the depth chart that are not with the ones or the twos. You got to put them on some team, like they have to be, and so it's the ones plus some, and it's the yeah. twos plus some on each of these units. I get that, but my offensive name was Colby young. When I saw him on there, I, ex I fully expected him to be on the red team offense. Clint, yeah, I yeah. fully expected him. And I thought he was going to have quite a day on the red team offense. We're going to talk about a guy that was on the red team offense that doesn't belong on the red team offense no. probably tomorrow, but Colby young was running with the ones he was in there with Carson Beck. And that was notable to me. I had a name on the defensive side of the ball. We'll get to that later too, but the other thing that was notable about Colby Young, Clint, and you absolutely nailed this when you were talking about what he could bring to this program and where he's going to be utilized and where he's going to see the field, this black team offense got down into the red zone. And it was not eventually we'll get to Colby Young. Nope. It was we're inside the 15. We throwing it to the young man in the end zone. Like that is – and it was not once – or twice, it was over and over and over again. This was clearly what Carson Beck was looking for. Yes. Now, middle of the field, Carson Beck was looking at some other options. He was he had some things that were in his mind yes. that he was that some chemistry seemed to be there. And we're going to talk again about all that. But when he got down in the red zone, there was no nobody was checking with anybody. We just go and. Zero to confusion. the well. Yeah. And the way that I saw Colby Young physically get off of of, of some, some pretty physical goal line coverage. We're going to talk about the DBs later. But J quick sneak peek. Exceptionally pleased. Really happy. Yes. Really happy. Yes. But the way I saw Colby Young get off of that, mm -hmm. use his physicality, and basically just big boy his way to catching the football. You know, sometimes when I'm throwing the, the ball in the yard with my son and some of his friends, you know, sometimes we're just playing, you know, and everybody's kind of yeah. level playing field, whatever. And then there's there's the occasion that you just throw it up top and we're just going to we're just going to big time. Um, that's what Colby Young looks like in the end zone. He's built for that kind of a role. He he nearly made a phenomenal catch in the end yes. zone off of his fingertips where he made a, yes. a crazy good move to get open. And you could see him just say to Carson Beck, just put it, put it up here. I'm 
And he nearly brought that ball down. I love what he's going to bring to this Georgia offense. He ain't going to lead this team in receptions. No. He ain't going to lead this team in yardage. No. But he's he's going to lead this team in touchdown receptions. I'll tell you that. Like, touchdown receptions take Colby Young to the bank right now because that's even what he's going to do. Not, even if it's not that back shoulder, that fade, or, or anything like that, if you get up in the if goal line press – and he's out there on an island, and you just do want a quick screen out there, solo, mano a mano against a DB, and see, just say, he just runs through yards. the guy. Just yeah. run through the guy. That's what I mean. Like the physicality that he brings is unlike other receivers we have seen. We've seen George Pickens have audacity and, and athleticism. He had strength and he had high point ability. All of that is true, but it was more acrobatic in what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Colby Young has the ability just to out. Muscle or big boy. I mean, that's that's what it is. He just is. I'm out here, a la Dylan Bell, a little bit, except he has more physicality than Dylan Bell. Dylan Bell has a little bit more elusiveness in the open field than Colby Young does. Um, but my gosh, Daniel, this this wide receiver core as a whole. We're gonna get to some other names, but as a yep. whole, it's incredible. And leading that charge is in fact Colby Young when it comes to the red zone. Yeah, uh, Dog Nation, just just get used to it. Get ready to be hearing that a lot and be be ready when it happens. You can start getting excited. This is a la Lane Kiffin when he would call a play and he saw the coverage and he starts raising his arms like a touchdown. You get inside mm-hmm. the 15 and Colby Young's on press coverage. Guys, just start saying, here comes six because it's going to happen a lot this year. We're going to come back after this. Give us some – I'm going to ask Daniel what his one name on defense was. He gave you Colby Young was his, but he, he wrote a little name down for the defensive side. I'm going to ask him that right after this. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is in fact FanDuel. FanDuel has playoff time in NBA, NHL. Mm. Baseball's in full swing. FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. By the way, if you got a uh, Marcelo Zuna MVP uh, preseason number and juice, right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks. All on an app that is safe, secure, easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet. An automatic win, FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, Clint, I know you want to talk about defense, but I think it's it once we get started, we're already here in the third segment. Once we get start, once we crack the seal on the defense, Clint, I don't know if we're gonna be able to I don't as know much, if we're gonna be able to pull it back in. As much as I love Colby Young, the mm. CJ Allen is we needed to see ch- one thing. We needed to see one thing, and that was the defense make strides. And let me just spoil tomorrow's episode for you. They did. They go they go ahead and did that. I want to talk about we mentioned Andrew Paul to open the show. So let's talk about the other backs and what we like saw it. out of them. Let's go yeah. there. That's kind of the news that's on Georgia fans' mind. We do lose a running back. Obviously, Branson Robinson is still coming off the injury and we don't know exactly you know what we're going to have out of him or what that's going to look like uh moving forward but we we did see some things from from a couple of backs now before we get into the two the top two backs who are going to be roderick robinson and and etn obviously um uh let me throw let me throw a little shout out to chauncey bowens clint because i thought he I thought he played admirably and particularly late in the game. Now, Gunnar yeah. Stockton did not complete the pass, but this was in one of those two minute situations. There were six two minute drives in the second half of this game because, again, Kirby Smart was not calling this game like a football game. He was coaching it like a practice. And he said, I'm going to give the other team more opportunity. So we're not going to bleed the clock. We're not going to no. do any of that. Like, we're going to get down here and. So Gunnar Stockton did not complete the pass, but he had a blitz pickup that for a true freshman who's been on campus for like six minutes, a hot minute, it was, it was really good. I'm telling you, you want to earn playing time for Kirby smart and you play running back, you pick up the blitz young man. And that is exactly, so shout out to Chauncey Bowens. I thought he looked, I thought he performed admirably yeah. and looked good. Um, obviously very thin at back because no Branson. Uh, we still got the freshmen who are who are coming in, no cash. So like there's a lot of guys that weren't uh, able to go. But two guys that did go, Clint, 
Roderick Robinson, uh-huh. and ETN. Uh, let's start with Roderick Robinson. Um, yep. Do you, he, do you have your Do you have your mouthpiece in right now? Do you no, I need have your mouthpiece. You need I need to go ahead and pop it in. Yeah, because the the chicklets are not safe when you're trying to bring down Roderick Robinson. I know we love CJ. We're a CJ Allen podcast. We are. No, but can true. I start with the opening drive of the game when CJ Allen got flat out Mack trucked by Roderick Robinson, and he did like he tried to hang on for dear life and couldn't even do that. It was it, like a junior hire on the back of that inflatable on the back of your boat, and just losing every battle with it and going too fast, y'all. That opened my eyes because I know who CJ Allen is. I'm not scared at all about who he is. That didn't bring down my view and no. level of interest as his linebacker. Nope. What it did was <laughs> Roderick Robinson, all of a sudden, not only does he have exceptional speed, yeah. top end speed, because he's got that, he's got the absolute straight line. I don't care who's there. I'm running this way. Let's just say without without alluding to the names that that everyone alludes to, there have been some very successful Georgia running backs who had elite top end speed. Here we go. And elite physicality, huh. through, like hitting the hole. That's, That's right. it's been a recipe that Georgia has. It's worked quite well. It looks very in good in red and black when that happens. Guys, there look again. I am look out for this kid. Look out. I'm not trying to my next statement is again, Andrew Paul, go be great. It, sure. That's Georgia fan. That's your yep. line. Okay. Mm-hmm. So go be great. There's a reason you're going elsewhere. Why is he going? There's Why a reason he... you're going elsewhere. We would welcome you back. Andrew, we would welcome you back. You're a great we we believe in you. Yeah. However, he had eyes. He's making a he, business decision. He saw what we saw. Mm-hmm. Okay. He saw ETN have an abject open field quickness that excites us. Okay. We hadn't seen it in a minute. We hadn't seen it in a minute, y'all. Secondly, uh, Roderick is is him as it pertains to first, second, any down. Again, he's got top end speed as well as hit the whole Mm -hmm. blast a linebacker, take on a DB. And if you think that Oscar Delp, his blocking ability on the edge where he's going to seal a linebacker and you come one-on-one with a safety that's not named KJ Bull. <laughs> T- oh boy. Sincere capital T's and P's, not lowercase T's and P's. No, and, we and on our capital. knees over here thinking about you. Just because <laughs> he is, this backfield, open my eyes, Daniel. The fact that we have ETN compliment is, and I swear the first person to say. Oh, they're going to say it. I, know. They're gonna say, they're gonna say, I was I'm, about to say it. I'm coming for y'all. Okay? I was about to say it. I'm coming again, for y'all. Again, again, the comparisons yes. are not crazy. They're not. Because the reason you hate phrases like that. I do. Are that in this case and in previous cases with names of players that I don't feel the need to mention. There's no no reason. To. There's no need to. In 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 both cases, the more physical back uh-huh. was also the faster of the two backs in a straight line in the straight open line. field. Now, you want to talk about ETN coming out of the backfield, making a reception, using the quickness, using the shiftiness. You want to talk about him hitting a hole and just whoop, like that little. Okay, he's bringing an element to Georgia football that we have not seen in a minute y'all we That's haven't right. seen it in a minute there was it wasn't on last year's team i'll just no. say that it wasn't no, it was there not. um he's going to be a well used weapon but the thing that i learned about the backfield mm-hmm. on saturday was that i don't have to sit around and wait for branson to get fully healthy in order for me to feel confident about a one-two punch at back that I want. And that's deeply what you should want as a Georgia fan. You don't want one back carrying the load. Like, that's not who we are. That's not what we want to be. You don't want that. And so what I saw from Roderick gave me all sorts of confidence to know that, Branson, you take your time. 
you get 100% because I know who you are too. I know who you are when you come back and there's a place for you on this roster as well. All of a sudden the two headed monster becomes a three headed monster. And real quick, again, again, Carson back out here doing surgical work. We'll talk about it later in the week. Sure. But if you compliment him and the wide receivers, we've already talked about how impressive they'd be with more names yet to come. You combine that with, okay, hey, hey, I, I, we've been hit in the mouth a, a couple of times by Rodder. That's okay. Okay, ETN, okay, now he's got us on our skates. Okay, okay. Oh, what if a guy who is fresh-legged the entire year who those, comes in? To what if those spill? legs were the size of Sequoias? Like, what if, what if that was what was... What if I am Groot was coming churning at you all of a sudden? It like that's Georgia ever had any success with a three-headed monster at the running back position? Has that ever worked out? Few times that has led us to all right. very good. Oh, but 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 what if those times that we had a three-headed monster, we had a quarterback that was the best in college football paired with that? Y'all, G Day was electric. It showed us a lot of things. We got a lot more to discuss. Um, shout out to the 199. We apologize for our conspicuous absence the last few days. You boys have been you have just been dealing with the sickness. And so it's it's over, it's done with, and we are back. We'll be here all week talking about G Day and all of the things we saw and loved, and we will see you guys then. See you.